Hey everybody, this is another FreeCAD path tutorial video and in this video I want to talk about the inside corner problem and the path dress up that we have to fix that. Uh, if you remember from a previous video, a dress up is a special operation that we can apply to an existing operation to modify the path in ways that account for uh, the deficiencies of the tool or some special need that we might have for the machine. So I'm going to run through a real typical or basic scenario and show you how the, the uh, dog bone dress up can be used to fix that problem. So if we take a look at, uh, say we got a part like this that's made from uh, two nested identical pieces that just slot together. I could start out by designing it in the sketcher and I've got my notch here and it's set at three millimeters which is going to be the thickness of the pad but it's just a simple shape and I pad it out to three millimeters like that so far so good and then I could go ahead and set up my contour operation to cut it out of the surrounding material uh, that all looks really good but the problem is that my cylindrical cutter, say this is a router bit or even a laser, uh, is going to move along this side. When it gets down, it, it's going to uh, produce a, a curved corner here instead of the straight corner that I designed. And the problem is going to be that when I slot my two pieces together, I'm going to get this overlap like this because those two pieces are, uh, those corners are interfering with each other right here. So clearly what I need to do is have some way of removing that additional material. Uh, and th this is really, it's a side effect of using a round tool to cut out a square corner. And, uh, uh, and it's a very common, it's referred to as the inside corner problem. So my options are, as I move the tool along, when I get down to this point, I could push the cutter up into the corner to remove the extra material. And that would give me a cutout that looks sort of like that. Or I could move it along this one face. I have to move in a little bit farther in order to fully clear the corner, and that would give me a cutout like that. Or I could move it all the way down to this point, basically overcutting the, my first cut like this. And for a, a lapped joint like this where the two pieces overlap, that probably makes more sense. So if I, result, if I did that cut, I'd end up with a piece that looks like this which allows this piece to protrude in the middle so it'll butt up against its, its mating piece. Um, but the nice thing is that when I assemble the two pieces, they will uh, align correctly and the overlap will cover up the overcut like that. So some of the complaints or arguments against uh, what I'm going to show you have, re have revolved around people saying, well, you know, you should just design these kinds of cuts into your basic model. Um, and you can do that, but the, of course the, the problem is that, you know, if you ended up with a, or if you were working on a design like WikiHouse that has a, a huge dependence on uh, these kinds of, of tabs and grooves and slots, you'd end up with a, uh, a cut sheet where there's literally hundreds and hundreds of these things that have to be, uh, where the design has to be modified with that, that arc in there. And then if you change the size of the tool you're using to cut this out of the surrounding material, you now have to go back and modify your design in all those places. And even if you made it parametric, uh, it still ends up with a much more complex uh, design than what you really need or want. Um, you know, in, in this case, your ideal design is a square corner and we're just doing this kind of a cut in order to deal with the reality of using a cylindrical cutter to make that. Um, the other argument that I've heard is that while you, you don't need to do this because you can just clean this up manually after the fact using a mortise bit or a, a file or something like that. But, you know, looking at a cut like this, you can see how, how absurd that would be as well. So clearly we need a way to modify our path uh, in order to do this kind of a cut. Okay, I'm in uh, FreeCAD now and I've got my part shown. Uh, and the contour generated showing the path around it. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, pa the uh, part so we can focus on the path. And I'm going to zoom in here a little tighter on this corner. If you remember from the dress up operation uh, for the drag knife, all you do to make this work is select the uh, contour path and then go up under path, 
path dress up, and this is the dog bone dress up. And you see that the, path, the corner has changed. If I uh, toggle on the contour, you can see where the old path was and uh, see the difference with the modified. I'll toggle that off. By default, it's going to do the first style, the, uh, which is called the dog bone style, uh, where it pushes the cutter at an angle between the two segments that it's transitioning between. Um, if you double click on the operation, you see that we have just a couple of different uh, options in here. The first is the style, dog bone being the default. T-bone horizontal and vertical go off of the part orientation. <laughs> oh, you can hear my dog whining in the background. She's been listening to me record videos for a while. Um, horizontal and vertical go off the uh, XY axis of the part. Uh, T-bone long and short uh, are a little more intelligent and they, they guess the direction based on the shorter and longer of the two uh, segments. The incision uh, is uh, controls the depth that the cutter will move uh, into, the, into the corner. If it's adaptive, it's working from the radius of the cutter. Uh, fixed is a fixed depth and the custom depth is, allows you to control uh, how far you go. So I can, could dial this in a little bit farther. Uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, adaptive for our purposes here and I'm going to go with T-bone horizontal which will push in like that. The uh, um, one thing you can't do right now is uh, individually adjust the properties on a per dog bone basis. Um, the uh, <laughs> She's still whining back there. I think she hears me talking about dog bones and it gets her going. Uh, anyway, we can't adjust the properties on a per dog bone basis. So if you need to do that, if you've got a sketch that has a lot of uh, different dog bones and you need them to be different properties, what you can do is dress up a dress up. So you apply the dress up and then apply it again and then you can individually turn them off and on as needed. Um, I think that about does it for the uh, um, for dog bone dress up. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts about this, please comment uh, either on the FreeCAD forum or in the video comments below. Uh, I'll try to address it. Anyway, that's it for dog bones. Hope it helps.